final one is our suppliers, but there's nothing special in the suppliers one. So most of the real logic is in the products business object. So now we turn to our front end. And what we've done is created a few more pages. Firstly, we can look at the products page. The products page has been data bound to the product business logic object. And what we've done is if we just reconfigure this, the, uh, you can see that it's pointing to the object products. Click on the object products, configure the data source. So it's pointing to the product object. It's going to use the get products method for updating. It's going to use the update command and it's going to pass the parameters in. For inserting, it would use the add. For deleting, we would use a delete if we had it. What we've then done is we've customized the grid by modifying some columns. We have added edit update cancel buttons to the front and we have also turned the category name and supplier name which we've added from our, our sort of our bound field into the list and we've customized the way they look. Now at the moment notice how there's no bound field. The reason is you need to refresh the schema if it sometimes loses that information and then what we had done is we would have dragged dropped things like the supplier ID into here. But we've customized these two to be quite intelligent. We can right mouse click and we can edit the template and look at the different columns. The category name, what we've effectively done here is modified the label. The label is data bound to the actual category name, which makes sense. However, when it comes to updating this, we need a combo box because what we want to do is bind the combo box to a list of just the categories. So as you can see, we're pointing to the categories object. We're asking for all of the categories. That method just returns the category table. But the data binding of the combo box points the selected value to the category ID of this particular product. That is going to come from the product data source. So this guy is bound to the actual, if we look at the data sources on here, the data source of where to fill itself from is our object source here. It's going to display the category name, but under the covers, it's going to hide the value, na value ID. That's why we need to make sure with the data binding that the category ID here matches the data value field here. And you'll see the effect this has. We've done exactly the same thing for the supplier name, so we won't bother showing that at this point. We'll now just kick off the products table and you can see that immediately we now have our normal looking page showing the category name and then the supply name. We can hit the edit button and normally of course what you get is text boxes for most things. However, this time we're getting for the category name the list. We can actually change that list. We could change the supplier to a new supplier and press update and immediately we can see that we have now updated those two items. So how much code do you think that we need to write to do any of this? None. The whole system is done for you by the front end. But the nice thing is the front end isn't talking to the database directly. Everything's going via the business logic layer. We can also look at the suppliers page. The suppliers page Okay, so what we've got on this page is the suppliers table and essentially we've got our object pointing to our suppliers information. So we're getting the suppliers. However, what we've also done is we've customized the products column. I've actually gone into editing the actual columns themselves and what I would have done to create this is added in a template field. And I will then have gone and customized that template field to just give it a header text, but then I would have writ right mouse clicked, edit the template, and gone to the column. And then in the item, what I've now done is I've created a combo box, and of course, we've bound the combo box. So we've created some sort of a, a data binding, but I think this is actually quite a complex data binding, and we have to actually do this in the HTML itself. So in the HTML, we've got a, a quite a complex data binding statement, because what we want to do is we want to show all of the products for a particular supplier. So here is the source of the data source, and as you can see, it's quite a lengthy statement. So what we want to do is break it down into parts. It starts off by looking at container.dataitem. This is essentially the row that we're pointing to. 
we're going to do some sort of a conversion on this using a C type to convert it to a data row view object. So take the generic item, make it a data row view. Then we're going to get the data row view and take the row property. Once we've got the row property, we can then convert that using again C type in this case for VB. We can convert the row type into a row that is specific for this particular data table. Let's go to the right here. Suppliers row is actually what we want to convert this to. The suppliers row has a method called get products, which we wrote, which specifically returns all of the products for this particular supplier row. We're then displaying the product name and I've the also got uh, an event that I've created ID on selected value. index changed, and the event is called product changed. In the code, all I'm basically doing is in that event pulling out the drop down list from the sender, and then I'm grabbing the value from that drop down list, and I'm going to do a response.redirect to another page and pass in the product ID. So, view it in the browser. We can now go and pick product for that particular supplier and it auto posts us back to an, to a new page with the right product ID. Go pick another one and it's the right item based on the product ID and finally go pick another one and so on. So this is pretty neat that again we can create these type of very interactive type screens and there's virtually no code in any of this stuff. The final thing that we might talk about is how to do paging. On this next page called page products, we're going to take the products table and we're going to page it and do sorting. Now what all we've really done initially is we've enabled paging and enabled sorting. However, in the object source, we've set up the get products method. So as you can see, it's bringing back all the products inside here so it's the standard method then what we do is we actually go to the object data source and we set some prop properties the first thing we set is that we enable paging as soon as we enable paging it's going to look for a method that has parameters called in this case start index and also max rows but because we're also going to do sorting we have included a sort parameter name here as well. The other thing that we've got to give it is if you're going to do paging you must give it a select count method. So we've pointed this at the select count method and it's actually going to bring back this information that we need. Now all of this is actually going to be covered in one of our other videos regarding data binding in ASP2. So this is really just a light introduction. But Remember all of this is using our business logic layer. So now when we do our paging Again, there's no code to write in any of this. You can see that we can page through this, and the system is running all of the right methods for us. But it's also doing our sorting based on whatever we click on. And you can see it's sorting the whole data. Remember that the sort actually came originally from this custom method that we wrote that took in the order by clause and allowed us to sort by whatever column we wanted. And then we filled this, this list up. So as you can see, we can quickly page back and forth and we can also sort quite easily as well. So, I realize there's a lot to take in in this demonstration, which is why I'm going to include the source code so that you can download the source code for this, have a play with it. If you do have any questions, please email me at dougar at blackbearit.com and like I said, we'll be doing another video that will focus more heavily on the data binding. This one really has tried to focus more on the business logic options and the data logic options. Thanks for your time.